sixth grade module three lesson nine classwork i'm going to skip example one because they don't give much instruction here and that's kind of something that you would do in class so i'm going to go down to exercises number one create a real world situation that relates to the points shown on the number line model be sure to describe the relationship between the values of the two points and how it relates to their order on the number line okay so it's a vertical number line which makes me think of either like elevation or temperature so I'm gonna go with temperature and I'm gonna say maybe there's someone who lives in like a really cold climate like Alaska let's say that Tom lives in Alaska He recorded the outside temperature two nights in a row because we have zero and negative one. So two nights in a row. On the first night, The temperature temp was zero degrees Fahrenheit and on the second night it was negative one degrees Fahrenheit. And then it kind of, so we don't really have a question to go with it, but it says describe the relationship between the values of the two points and how it relates to their order on the number line. So let's say that, so negative one is less than zero, meaning that um, the second night was colder than the first night because negative one is below zero on the number line. So something like that. You can have a completely different problem, but you just need to make sure at the end part you're describing the relationship between zero and negative one. For each problem, determine if you agree or disagree with the representation. Then defend your stance by citing specific details in your writing. Felicia needs to write a story problem that relates to the order in which the numbers negative six and a half and negative ten are represented on a number line. She writes the following. During a recent football game, our team lost yards on two consecutive downs. We lost six and a half yards on the first down. During the second down, our quarterback was sacked for an additional 10 yard loss. So what I see here, if we lost six and a half, that's negative six and a half, and then was sacked for an additional, so sacked means you lose yards, 10 yard loss, so that's another negative 10 yard loss. Which, so, so far the numbers are correct. On the number line, I represented the situation by first locating negative six and a half. I located the point by moving six and a half units to the left of zero, which would be correct. Then I graphed the second point by moving 10 units to the left of zero. That would both be correct because they're both negative, so we're moving to the left of zero. So I agree. And then we need to defend by citing specific details. So I'll say that they are both negative. So they will be to the left of zero. And we can say that negative 10 is 
less than negative six and a half because it is further to the left. Number three, Manuel looks at a number line diagram that has the points negative three fourths and negative one half graphed. He writes the following related story. I borrowed 50 cents from my friend Lester. I borrowed 75 cents from my friend Calvin. I owe Lester, then I owe Calvin. Okay, so you might be looking at this saying, what the heck, um, This, these numbers are fractions and these are money. But 50 cents would be equal to 50 out of 100 when we're talking out of a dollar, which 50 hundredths is equal to a half. And you borrowed it, so you're losing it. You don't actually have it. You're now down 50 cents. So that's negative one half. And then borrowed 75 cents. So 75 cents is 75 out of 100, which is equal to 3 fourths. So you borrowed 75 cents. So you're down 75 cents or negative 3 fourths, which corresponds to that. I owe Lester less than I owe Calvin. So which person would you owe less, 50 cents or 75 cents? Well, if you owe 75 cents, you actually owe more. So he owes Calvin more. It says I owe Lester less than I owe Calvin. So that is true. So I agree with all of that. We can say negative 3 fourths is equal to 75 cents and negative one half is equal to 50 cents or down 50 cents. Um, both show that he owes money. And negative three fourths is farthest to the left on the number line. So he owes, who is that? Calvin more than Lester. More money. Number four, Henry located two and one fourth and two and one tenth on a number line. He wrote the following related story. In gym class, both Jerry and I ran for 20 minutes. Jerry ran two and one fourth miles. I ran two and one tenth mile. I ran a further distance. So I think it's easiest to either put these both in fraction form or decimal form. Uh, let's do two and one fourth. And this says two and one tenth. So I'm just going to change that to two and one tenth. So... Let's see, they said Jerry ran two and one fourth, I ran two and one tenth, I ran farther. Let's see if that's true. Did, is two and one tenth greater than two and one fourth? This is where it might be easier to put it in fraction form. So two and one four, decimal form. Two and one fourth is equal to two and 25 hundredths. Two and one tenth is two and 10 hundredths. So if you, which one's further? Who ran further? To me, it looks, so this is Jerry and me. So Jerry ran further because 2 and 25 hundredths is greater than 2 and 10 hundredths. So I disagree. Um, we can say 2 and 25 hundredths is farther to the right on a number line than two and one tenth. So I did not run a further distance. than Jerry.
Number five, Sam looked at two points that were graphed on a vertical number line. He saw the points negative two and one and five tenths. He wrote the following description. I'm looking at a vertical number line that shows the location of two specific points. The first point is a negative number, so it's below zero. The second point is a positive number, so it's above zero. Let me just draw this one. Looking at a vertical number line that shows two specific points. First point is negative, so it's below zero. That would be true. Second point is a positive number, so it's above zero. That would be true. The negative number is negative two. So there's negative two. The positive number is half a unit more than the negative number. So a half a unit more, if this is negative one right there, just half a unit would be right there, negative one and a half. But this says that the points were negative two and one and a half. So I'm going to disagree here because the description would put that second point right there, not up here at positive one and one half. It would actually take us, let's see, to get from negative two to one and one half would be one, two, three and a half. So we would have to be three and a half more than the negative number. So let's kind of write that out. Um, let's say one and a half is one and a half units above zero, negative two is negative two units below zero. That would mean negative two, or actually let's say one and a half is three and a half units above negative two, not one and a half. just to be a little more specific. Number six, Claire drives a vertical number line diagram and graphs two points, negative 10 and 10. Draws a vertical number line, writes negative 10 and 10. These two locations represent different elevations. One location is 10 feet above sea level, one location is 10 feet below sea level. On a number line, Number line 10 feet above sea level is represented by graphing a point at 10, and 10 feet below sea level is represented by graphing a point at negative 10. So I would agree. So the zero here represents sea level. And Let's just say both locations are 10 feet from zero but in opposite directions. Number seven, Mrs. Kimball, the sixth grade math teacher, asked the class to describe the relationship between two points on the number line, seven and 45 hundredths and seven and five tenths to create a real world scenario. So let's just draw it first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's seven, there's eight. Seven and 45 hundredths would be a little bit less than seven and five tenths. And seven and 45 hundredths would be a little bit less because it's really comparing 45 and 50 hundredths. Two friends, Jackie and Jenny, each brought money to the fair. Jackie brought more than Jenny. 
Jenny brought $7.45. Jenny brought $7.50. Since 7 and 45 hundredths has more digits than 7 and 5 tenths, it would come after 7 and 5 tenths on the number line to the right, so it's greater value. Okay, well, that's a myth that we debunked back in fourth, fifth grade, right? Just because a number has more digits doesn't mean that it's larger. So just that statement right there makes me say disagree. Just because a number has more digits does not mean it is larger. I mean, for example, like look at these, we can always add a zero at the end if it has a decimal point. So just because it has more digits when we're talking with decimals does not mean that it is larger. We can say that if we want to keep expanding, let's just say seven and fifty hundredths is greater than seven and forty five hundredths because fifty hundredths is greater than forty five hundredths and we could also say seven is equal to seven so those kind of cancel each other out and number eight Justine graphs the points associated with the following one half numbers on a vertical number line negative one and one fourth negative one and one half and one she then writes the following real world scenario i'm going to just draw it first so they're all oh they're not all negative we put zero there one then we need negative one and one fourth so there's negative one negative two I separate them into fourths, let me plot one. Negative one and one fourth would be right there. And negative one and one half would be right there. Okay, the nurse measured the height of three sixth grade students and compared their heights to the height of a typical sixth grader. Two of the students' heights are below the typical height and one is above the typical height. So zero representing typical height. And so, so far I agree because it says one is above the typical height, which we have right here. One, one is above and two are below. The coordinate, who, the point whose coordinate is one represents the student that has a height one inch above the typical height. Okay, I agree, it's right here. Given this information, Justine determined that the student represented by the point associated with negative one and one fourth is the shortest of the three students. Okay, so they're saying one and one fourth is the shortest, but if we're looking at our number line here, actually negative one and one half would be the shortest student. So I disagree. Um, let's see. Negative one and one fourth does not represent the shortest student. Negative one and one half does. Negative one and one half is farther from or farther below zero, let's say that. On the number line. And that is all.